Knowing that we have a good comprehensive of the peak drive, let's discuss a little bit about the QRS. Yeah, that's a good uh, point. So the QRS is the torque sensing component of the CVT. Uh, it's what we call the smart side of the CVT. So it's made of an arrangement of a helix or a cam and a spring. That combination uh, will react to the load of the drive axle of the vehicle. The spring will uh, keep the two sheaves together during idle position or low RPM of the vehicle. What is the shift sequence in this? For the drive belt to upshift, it must first overcome the side force that is being applied with the two sheave on the belt. So as the drive fully starts engaging, uh, this creates a tension in the belt, which is going to promote an upshift in the driven pulling. As the RPM is going to increase, there's going to be more displacement of the belt in the drive pulley, which will create a displacement in the driven pulley as well. Chad, what's the easiest way to understand a cam, as some people also call it a helix? The way I look at it, I think about it as a wood screw. You have a fine and you have a coarse a screw. Exactly, it's a, and it's a good way to look at it. Uh, first of all, let's start off with the basics. So the cam is the torque sensing uh, element in the QRS. Uh, it also feeds a portion of the engine torque that's been applied to the sheave by the belt. This force that creates on the sheave will promote upshift of the belt in the driven pulley. So like you said, if we see it as a wood screw, having a smaller uh, angle, let's say a 40 degree, will generate more force on, the, on both of the sheaves, on the sliding sheaves, sorry, which will promote a downshift, or let's say we'll have a slower upshift. On the opposite, uh, having a larger cam angle, let's say at 50 degrees, uh, will generate less force on the two sheaves, which will create faster upshift. So what's the effect on the downshift? So on downshift, having a smaller angle uh, will generate more force on the sliding sheave, which will uh, promote uh, downshift of the belt in the driven pulley. Having a larger cam angle, let's say at 50 degrees, will generate less side force on the movable sheave, which will result in a slower downshift of the pull, of driven pulley. Now that we know what the cam does, what does the spring have to do with this? Yeah, so the spring will also generate some uh, side force on the belt by applying this force to the boat sheaves. Uh, the only thing, it's going to apply it in the low gear position uh, and to allow initial acceleration. What's the effect of a stiffer spring? So having a stiffer spring, you're going to apply more, more side force uh, on the belt by the uh, boat sheaves. Uh, so that's going to favor the downshift and it's going to rise a little bit the RPM. On the opposite side, having a softer spring uh, will result in a faster upshift since we're applying less force on the belt by the sheets. So with this info, we could apply this to the mountain sleds. Yes, exactly, Ken. And what we have to understand is that trail riding and mountain riding are quite different type of riding. Uh, so we need to have a combination or a calibration of the driven pulley that's going to be different for the trail and mountain segment. In mountain, we're gonna try and favor a little bit more the back shift. Uh, in that case, we'll try to use some smaller cam angle, let's say a 40 degrees, and we will also go towards a stiffer spring again to favor back shift. But in the end, it's always a combination between those two uh, parts uh, that are going to have uh, to do the, the job for the certain vehicle that we want to, to calibrate. What we're trying to do is we're just trying to get the perfect recipe. Exactly. And it's always a calibrating the QRS or even the entire CVT. It's always a combination or a compromise, should I say, between belt clampage, belt slippage, uh, belt tension, and also the heat generated in the belt by all those factors. So like you said, uh, we have to find a good recipe for our type of riding. Great. That was really interesting. Thanks. Let's move on to the next segment.